So we're, we're recapping what we've done so far. So who remembers who this person is? Raise your hand if you remember who this person is. Angie? Samuel, exactly. And who remembers these two hoodlums? Um, Griffin. Shh. Hophni and Phineas, yes. So in the story, this was called the good son, right? Did Samuel do good or bad? Good, good right. And then Hophni and Phineas were the bad, bad, bad sons. Bad. Were they were they crazy? Yeah. They were bad. What happened? What happened to them? They died. They died exactly. So the whole story, uh, excuse me, the whole story of Samuel up to this point is Samuel's good, Hophni and Phineas are bad. It would be like this. I need two volunteers. I need one guy, and I need one girl. Max, since you're leaving, you get your last hurrah here, and, and uh, Lila. So, in this story, sometimes when you read stories, okay, there's Max, there's Lila. Um, authors like to use, it's called a, ready? A narrative device. It's a special way of writing that it's called comparing and contrasting. So let's all look at Max and Lila. And what about them is the same? So compare. What is the same? Not what's what different. Is the same? What is the what same? Is the same? They're both nice. They're both nice? Max at least. They're both humans. They're humans. Good job. Helen. They're, They're both people. Okay. They both have teeth. They both have teeth. Yeah. Alexander? Beings. Um, German. They both have black on them. They both have black on them. Good. Aaron? They both have hair. Hair! That's incredible. Some, not, we'll get it in contrast in a minute. They both have hair. Think about what that might be different too in a second. And last one, Abigail. They both have ears. They both have ears. Okay, now, so we, so whenever we did the story of Samuel, and, and that there's some things in them that are the same, they're both. Um, they're both in Eli's house. They both are boys, right? They're both are evil. They're not both evil. So what's different now? Like what is what is different about Max and Lila? Okay, now these are respectable, appropriate things, not inappropriate things. Elaine, uh, boy and girl. Okay, how many guys are thinking that in a second? Okay, right. What else is different between Max and Lila? Basically. Different shirts on, okay. Serena? Max is wearing a hat. Max is wearing a hat. Lila is not. Abigail? Abigail? Different hair. What? Well, color. color. Okay, Max, show us your hair. Oh, yep, yeah, they do. What else is different about their hair? Katie? Okay, he has a sweatshirt and she doesn't. Yeah, that's kind of debatable. What would it be? Uh, Cole? One, one. Fight our battles for us. Right? 
So then they selected, what was the guy's name? Saul. Saul, exactly. Saul was head and shoulders above everybody. A head taller than all the others. Uh, my favorite is, he's impressive. Say impressive. Impressive. Saul did two things wrong. Uh, one, he offered sacrifice to see the sheep on fire. I did good on that one, didn't I? That was good. Yeah. Like that goal? Wait, you I, put, I didn't draw it, I used graphics. So I put the fire behind and then I put the sheep on top. It's called layering. It's really cool. Uh, so, and then I put the layer on top of this. So Saul disobeyed when he wasn't supposed to, so then his kingdom wasn't going to keep going. And then, remember last time what he did? Yeah. Remember? Yeah. He, he lied, but he didn't know he was lying because he had, he, he wasn't very smart. So he got rejected. He saved the king, he saved the best of the cattle and the best of the sheep. And that means, we concluded last week, that Saul had a bad, hard heart. What do we use to show your heart? A what? Uh, we had a Lego block, right? And Play-Doh. And Play-Doh. Can you, can you mold a Lego block? No. Well, if you get the temperature hot enough, right, then it will melt the plastic. But by itself, can you can you bend the plastic Lego block? Yeah, yeah. 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 here's yeah. the Human oh, beings, shh, shh. human beings can't do the Lego block without using tools or heat. No. So that leads us to the story today. So Samuel was sad about the whole Saul situation. So he's like this. Kind of frustrated, right? Um, then the God said, hey, Sam, why are you all sad? I've rejected him as king. Go get your horn of oil. I'm going to send you to a guy named Jesse in a town called Bethlehem. Now, where have you heard that before? Ready? Where Jesus was born. But this was thousands of years before Jesus was born. Maybe 1,500 years before Jesus was born. Jesse of Bethlehem. I've chosen one of Jesse's sons to be what? The king. The king, exactly. So uh, Samuel says, well, wait, God, if Saul will hear about what I'm going to do, and he's going to kill me. Because if you've got a king already, you can't go find another king without the, normal, the regular king getting mad at you and, and killing you, right? Could, uh, let's say, uh, Sam Werner, right? Nora's dad. Let's make him president of the United States. Can we do that? Yeah. No, no we can't. Only the voting of the whole family. We can't make Sam the president. Otherwise, the president will get mad at him, right? We'll get mad. So, here's this funny thing. The Lord, uh, Saul, Samuel said this to the Lord, and guess what? The Lord ignores Samuel. <laughs> he doesn't even answer him. And so Samuel, he says, go and bring your oil and make a sacrifice. Freddie, uh, I need you to move What's over that by Kate. Thanks, Freddie. I don't know. Can you go to the bathroom? Why don't you wait for almost done with the story, okay? And then you can go to the bathroom. Hear me? Grady, scoop that go right in until you move. Okay. 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 Okay
they have nice stuff or not nice stuff um, or whatever they do. So here's what God says. You ready? This is very important. Ready? Don't distract Cain. I move you from one place to the other, okay? The Lord said, don't consider Eliab's outward appearance or how tall he is. I've rejected him. God, the Lord, doesn't look at the things we look. Man looks on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks where? In our hearts. Right. There are people who dress really nice, drive really nice cars, and, and smile really nice too. And inside, their heart is rotten and hard. Right? There are people who look dirty and poor and they don't have a lot of stuff, and their hearts are really good. So you can't just judge somebody on the outside what's going on on the inside. inside, right? Now, if I was to ask your parents, does Molly have a hard heart when she gets in trouble, or does Molly have a soft heart when she gets in trouble? And Pat and Katie, her parents, would say whatever they think. So it's not how Molly looks in the morning when she gets up out of bed. It's how Molly acts and what her behavior is. So if I was to ask, let's see here, uh, um, Adriana's teacher at school, does Adriana, does she have a hard heart in class, or does she have a soft heart? And people that hang around with us often, they what? They know what kind of heart we have, don't we? Yeah. And even your small group leader here, we've been hanging out with you guys for this whole school year. Guess what? We know which one of you guys, Darren, has a hard heart or a... So it's really important not just to look on the outside, Sam, but also on the inside. So then there was a second brother, okay, because they said, God said no to Eliab. And then the second brother, his name was Abinadab. Can you say Abinadab? Abinadab. Guys, your arms are really going to get tired because I'm not going to call on you until the end. So I would just put your hand down, okay? Um, but if you want an exercise, then you can keep your hands up. Uh, so Abinadab came, and Samuel goes, God, is this the one? And God says, no, so not that one. And then the next guy came, his name was Shema. Can you say Shema? Shema. Shema. So Samuel says, God, is this the right one? And God goes, nope, nope, not that one. So then the, the third, the fourth son came, nope, not that one. The fifth son came, nope, not that one. The sixth son came, nope, not that one. And the seventh one came, and yes. nope, not that one. Wait a second. There's a problem. There were seven sons that came in front of Samuel, and all of them God said, No. So, did Samuel hear God wrong? Did he, was it the different Jesse and Bethlehem? Was it, was it the right son? Did he hear Bahala Bahala? So Samuel goes, Jesse. He asks Jesse an obvious question. He says, Are these all the sons you have? Right? And Jesse goes, Oh, well, you know, we got this little runt, the youngest one, but he's out tending sheep. And I could just picture Samuel's face. No. To Jesse, right? Samuel's like, I said all of your sons, not just the seven you think are the awesomest, but even the eighth one that you think isn't the awesomest. So, so, uh, so Samuel says, send for him, and this is hilarious. We will not sit down until he arrives. So all seven of David's brothers, who are all older, all have to stand and wait for their little runt brother to show up, who they always kick out to the ten sheep. How many of you guys like your little brothers? Okay, yeah, exactly. Oh, wait, no, no, don't like your little brother. Right. So, so, the little brother shows up, and that's what he looks like. He is ruddy. And the story says, with a fine appearance, and he has handsome features. So he's a pretty good-looking little kid, right? And God says, um, oh, sorry, clicker. Rise, anoint him, he is the one. Dun, dun, uh. So we don't know his name yet, okay? So Samuel takes the oil, and he dumps it. Uh, not dumps it. He pours it over David's head. That's a sign of you being anointed. In America, when the president is sworn in, we put our hands, the president, excuse me, puts a hand on the Bible, and uh, 
sorry, puts his left hand on the Bible, raises his right hand, right? And he solemnly swears to fulfill the duties of the country. And that's how he becomes president, president right? In, in Israel and in, in most other countries where there's a king, they would take oil and they would pour it over your head. Don't do this at home, please. It gets messy. Okay, don't get your vegetable oil out of the kitchen. Um, but oil is usually really what? Sticky. It's not sticky. Slippery. It's slippery, right. Your engine in your, in your parents' car has oil in it. And the reason why is so that the engine doesn't freeze up. It keeps the engine moving. And all, if the oil runs out, guess what happens to your engine? It freezes. It freezes. Exact, that's the exact word. It freezes or seizes. And it doesn't work anymore. Is oil important? No. Oil is super important. So, whoops, did I click the wrong button? So he anoints David's jump, oh, sorry, anoints the kid's head with oil, and then the next part tells us his name. The Spirit of the Lord came upon who? David! David! In power. Now, in, the, in today's world, we make the picture of the Spirit is like a dove. So God's presence, his Spirit, showed up on who? David. On David, exactly. So now, David is the man. Oops, sorry. Oh, yep, right there. What do you think his brothers think? Um, Helen? Yeah, I imagine, just I imagine all his brothers are like this. Oh, oh, oh. What? All seven of them are probably ticked off that their little brother got something special, right? So. Remember, the story of Samuel, the whole book that we've been learning, is a story of a good son versus a bad son. Comparing and contrasting between two different people. So, who's the king right now? Saul. Saul. And who's the next king? David. David. Who knows? Who are the people who knows who the next king is? <gasps> Name them. Ready? Follow. David knows. Grady. Okay, Helen? Samuel, Samuel knows. Yeah. Abigail, hold on, Abigail, next one. <coughs> that was yours, Elise? Yes. Jesse knows. Darren? God knows. God knows. Max? Uh, Jesus knows. No? Okay, yeah. <laughs> uh, Bowden? Uh, his brother. So that's that's only people who know. Nobody else knows. Okay, this makes the next part of the story. This makes the next part of the story kind of funny. So meanwhile, Saul, but now this is the next part of the story. Watch. Now the Spirit of the Lord had departed from Saul. Uh-oh. The Spirit went on David, and then what happened with Saul? It left. And then the evil spirit from the Lord came to Saul, and he tormented him, which means, which means ha, 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 ha. Messed with him all the time. Um, so Saul's special people around him are like, how do we get him? How do we help him? How do we help him? Well, they discovered that anytime someone played a harp or music, then what? He would feel better. The spirit would stop messing with him. So they were like, well, who's a good harp player? Guess who is a good harp player? David. David! Oh my goodness. This is funny. Who knows that David is the next king? Only the people we mentioned, right? Does Saul know yet? No. no. So David comes in, plays the harp for Saul, and the evil spirit stops messing with Saul and leaves him alone. And Saul's like, this guy is awesome. Can we keep him? And the tenants go, well, sure, you're the king. You can do whatever you want. So Saul goes, sweet, I'm going to keep David. Remember what a king can do? A king can take your kids and make him serve him anytime he wants. That was one of the consequences of getting a king. Just so, like slaves. Yep, yeah, so David is now a servant. They didn't call him slaves. A servant of who? Oh, but who is the next king? David. And Saul doesn't know. So, whenever the Spirit from God came upon Saul, uh, from God, David would take his heart and play. Then relief would come to Saul. He would feel better. And the evil spirit would leave Saul. <coughs> So Saul was like so, so excited about David. So next week, this is the next time we need followers, which is in a couple weeks, we're going to tell a famous story, and we're going to try to do it in a real fun way. How many of you guys have ever heard the story of David and the giant Goliath? Yes! Or David and Goliath? 
Okay? The next story, next, I'm, I'm giving you, I'm breaking my silence, my secrecy. Next week, next time you follow, is the story of David and Goliath. So what should have happened, who should have been fighting Goliath? Who was the king? Saul. Oh, and how tall is Saul? I'm not tall. He's supposed to be what? Super tall. Super tall. So who's supposed to, okay, if you have a tall king, who's supposed to fight the tall giant? Saul. Ah, Saul. Saul. But who ends up fighting the giant? You guys know the story. David. David does. So, and then some interesting things start to happen between David and Saul. Who's good in this, in this, who's the good one here? Raise your hand. David. 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 Who's the bad one in here? Saul. Oh. So from, from next week, next time on, David and Saul are going to start fighting, fighting back and forth. But how do you, if you're David, and you're supposed to be a good king with a good heart, how can you fight somebody who has a bad heart without having a bad heart? Oh, do you fight fire with fire, or do you fight God's spirit with the evil? God, God's spirit oh, with the evil. Oh, I like it. All right, let's pray. God, let's pray. There it is, Max. We're going to pray. God, wow. Max, shh. God, Trevor, come back and sit down where you're supposed to be. Grady, stop worrying about yourself or somebody else. Okay, bow your heads. Close your eyes. Um, God, you tell amazing stories, and it's amazing to hear um, how David became the next king, and help us as your people not to judge, or not to look, and just think about what's on the outside of people, but also what's on the inside. And let's encourage Donald to come. Let's encourage our friends and those around us to love you with our soft hearts instead of our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right.